Okay. All right. Well, welcome everyone. This is Learn to Crochet the Suzette Stitch with Dana Neal. My name is Jenny and Dana will be leading the show today. If you have questions, please use the Q&A. We are recording today's class and we will email a link to the recording in 24 hours along with the pattern instructions as well. So, um, Okay, well, you, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we do have this great introductory offer from our sponsor, I Like Crochet Digital Magazine. Uh, if you are not already a member, this is a great introductory offer for just $5. You get a one-year subscription to the digital magazine. Um, and uh, you get access to all of the previously uh, submitted patterns as well to the magazine. So all of the back issues, um, it's a great offer. It's a great opportunity. Everything is ad free. Everything is um, tech edited. So all the patterns are just flawless and perfect and they range in different skill levels. So beginner to advanced, there's something for everyone. So we will post the link here in the chat as well. I like crochet.com slash virtual 23 to claim that offer. Uh, again, Dana is our instructor today. So she has been crocheting for nine years and she's been making baby blankets for friends and family. She is enthusiastic about patterns that feature easy to repeat designs so that she can work them up while hanging out with family or listening to a good podcast. So without further ado, I am going to pass it along to Dana. Oh, and this is just a promo for an upcoming class, but we'll get to that later. Dana, take it away. Okie dokie. Um, so welcome everybody. Um, I'll start by talking a little bit about the stitch and about the materials that we need. Um, I Yeah, I'm excited that you guys are here. It's actually a very simple stitch. So if you guys have any experience with crochet, knowing, you know, basic single crochet, double crochet, it, it's, you'll be shocked how easy it is. So that's why I'm throwing in the border tutorial for the herringbone half double crochet border, which I think is a beautiful border. Um, and, and with the tools you learn in the class today, you'll be able to make a coaster, a dishcloth, a baby blanket, a full size Afghan, whatever you need. Um, so actually I am going to move it to my hand. So these are the materials that we'll need. Um, two colors of yarn. So I'm just using, this is Hobby Lobby's I Love This Yarn, uh, simple, simple yarn little scissors to cut the yarn, uh, darning needle to or tapestry needle to weave in your ends. Uh, stitch markers, I think are super helpful. They're not required, required, but I think they are so helpful to take the guesswork out of knowing where your edges are. And then I've got an eye, two different eye crochet hooks. Um, I'll be using the pearls one today. I like how it feels in my hands, but this is just a regular old boy crochet hook um, and they're I nine size. And then I'm going to just push all this stuff out of the way. Here is the swatch of this pattern. So the Suzette stitch is in the middle. And then the herringbone half double crochet border is at the edges. And maybe I'll try holding it a little, little closer. The white doesn't show up super well on camera, unfortunately. So hopefully the colors I use during the class today will. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with this nice blue yarn. Head and chain. You can chain any even number, which is the nice thing about this pattern. It's so easy to adapt it for whatever you're working on. Um, for the class, we're going to chain 12. I think that'll be a nice size. So you'll make your slip knot. Start your hook. We'll just chain 12. And I'm curious if, if anybody wants to drop a note in the chat, let me know, like, what is your level of crochet expertise? Are you a brand new beginner? Are you, do you have many, many years experience? Have you ever done this stitch before? I think that was six. Let's see, seven. Okay. A lot more yarn. Cute. All right, let me double count, make sure I got my 12. Oh man, the camera is pretty out of focus. Give it just a second to find to find where we're at. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. All right, I gotta pull one out. 
Okie dokie. So you've got your foundation stitches. Now Deborah says, mom taught me when I was about 10, I'm now 63, that's awesome. All right. Now in this, oh, so I, I mentioned I really like stitch markers. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry, the camera is so blurry. Let me get it to focus. I really like stitch markers. I like to mark at this point right behind the hook. So I know that I'm about to start my next row, that this is the edge of the first row. Um, I really like clover stitch markers because they're made out of silicone. So they're really flexible. All right, now for row two, well, row one, in the second chain from the hook, you're going to single crochet and then double crochet into the same stitch. So we are skipping the first chain and right here. Snug up that yarn a bit. It got a little loose around my hook. Single crochet. And double crochet in the same stitch. Okie dokie. Next, we're going to skip one stitch and then single crochet and double crochet in the next stitch. So we're going to skip this one right here and move on to the next one. Oh, I love this. So many folks are saying they've been stitching for 50 years. That's amazing. I've got 40 to go to catch up. All right, single crochet and then double crochet in that next stitch. Let it focus. Moving on, skip this next stitch, single crochet and double crochet in the next stitch. And that's that's where we're doing our, that's the pattern for this first row. Skip one stitch and then single crochet and double crochet in the following stitch. I'll try to go a little slower so the camera doesn't go out of focus so much. Unfortunately, um, I messed with the settings a lot and I could not find anything that would prevent the auto focusing from happening. Wow, it's really out. Give it just a second. Sorry about that. All right. Skip a stitch. Single crochet. Double crochet in the next stitch. And we're getting towards the end here. We just have a couple left. In the final, the final chain stitch, you're just going to single crochet. My goodness, I'm so sorry about the autofocus issue. There we go. Okay, so we've just got the two chains left here. This very last one, we're just going to single crochet and that is how we end that first row. I'm just going to lay this out. Gabriella says I'm going fast. You know, we've got a lot of, it's a pretty simple stitch. So what I can do even is show this first row again, if folks are um, interested in that. Pretty easy, straightforward stitch. This is just our first row. It doesn't look like a whole lot yet. It'll look really nice once we get going. So I'm just gonna pull it out and we're gonna do it again. So we've got the time. So make your slip knot. And chain any even number. I am gonna chain 12 again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12. When you have your 12, 
Put your stitch marker at the back, right behind your hook. The way the pattern is written, whenever I say place marker, it's always right behind your hook. And then in your second chain from the hook, single crochet. and double crochet. Skip one chain. Single crochet. And double crochet in the same stitch. Chain, single crochet, and double crochet. Jenny is asking, oh, go ahead. So we had someone spamming the chat. Um, so I had to update the chat settings so that no, you know, unfortunately, I didn't know how to remove that person. So I just updated the chat settings so that people can now only interact with the host and the panelists. So me and Dana. Uh, but Jenny does have a question. She was distracted by the user. I apologize, you guys. Um, she's wondering, are we restarting or are we on the other color yarn? So it looks like Dana is still just, you know, moving right along here with uh, the pattern, so. Yes, yeah, so I was showing the beginning again. Um, somebody had asked, said that I was going quickly, which is fair. Um, so this is near the end of row one and we've just been doing the single crochet, double crochet in the stitches across. At the last stitch, you'll have two stitches or two chain stitches left from the previous row. You are going to just single crochet in the last stitch there. And that is how you end the row. There was a question a few minutes ago. Um, Santera in the Q&A was wondering how many chain stitches to start. So do you have that? Uh, yes. Yeah. So for the class today, we're just going to, we're chaining 12. Um, that's, it should be a nice size little swatch uh, just for the class. You can start with any even number of chains. So if you are following along and you're interested in making a dishcloth, you can start with a maybe more like 20, 25, or excuse me, 26 chains. Um, for the baby blanket pattern that's that's been linked in the chat, that pattern starts with 110 stitches. So those are those are a couple examples. For the class, 12 is a nice number just to get get really familiar with the pattern. All right, we've single crocheted into the last stitch of the row. I'm gonna chain one and turn. Once again, I'm gonna place a stitch marker right behind my hook to mark the last stitch of the row. All right, so for row two, what we're going to do in this first stitch here, let me uh, let me get a little pointer to highlight exactly where to place your hook. So right here, this first stitch after the chain one is where we're going to insert the Suzette stitch again. So. Hold it up a little closer to the camera here. This first stitch here, we're going to do our single crochet, double crochet. And that is the last single crochet from the previous row. And as we work across, as we work this pattern moving forward, you're going to be working into the single crochets from the previous row. Um, so we're skipping this stitch, which was the double crochet from the previous row, and working into the next stitch, which is the single crochet from the previous row. 
So you'll single crochet and double crochet. Skip a stitch. Crochet. And double crochet. Oh, Jenny, I was, I'm glad you were able to figure out the chat settings to, so that everyone can interact again. Yes, um, if you guys didn't see my chat, uh, I did remove that one user, so I've updated the chat settings and we can all talk to each other again, so enjoy. <laughs> right, so we're nearing the end of the row again. There's just the two stitches. Well, there's there's this stitch and then where I've marked um, the the end of the pre the previous row. Those are the two spaces left in this row to work. And the very you're going to skip the one stitch again. And in that marked space, excuse me, I bumped my hand cam here. In that last space, you'll work a single crochet again. and turn. So we're starting to see the pattern forming where you get these pretty little, like almost I don't, like semicircles, little rainbow shapes, uh, whatever you wanna call them throughout the rows, which is just twisty and creates this beautiful texture throughout the pattern. All right, so I'm gonna move the stitch marker up behind my hook. But surely. You know, so in this first space after the chain one from the previous row, so this is your single crochet from the previous row, single crochet and double crochet. Let it focus, skip this stitch and go into the next one. Single crochet and double crochet. Stitch, single crochet and double crochet. So Paul is asking, what stitch are you working into on this row, the single crochet again? Yep, yep, throughout the, the rest of the pattern, we're always working into the single crochet stitches from the previous row. That is a good question. Our yarn. All right, and once again, we've got the two stitches left from the previous row. Let me hold that up to the camera closer. So we've got the unmarked stitch and then the marked stitch. Last stitch where it's marked. Just do a single crochet to end the row. Chain one and turn. And so we're just gonna continue along with this for a few rows, a few more rows to get a nice little swatch formed because that'll be a good foundation for our border stitch. Uh, the herringbone half double crochet border is so pretty. I've put it on a handful of blankets now and it's a it's a nice twist on the regular half double crochet stitch that it stacks the stitches just beautifully in this. It, it looks like really squishy and cozy. Um, and I just think it's a, a really beautiful stitch 
to, to border any blanket really, or a coaster or a dishcloth, whatever project you are working on. At the end of the row, I'm just single crochet into that last stitch. Michelle says this stitch is so pretty. I agree. I love this stitch. It's when I was trying to come up with a new baby blanket and I was looking for stitches. I saw this one and I saw it was a one row repeat and it was just single crochet, double crochet stitches. And I loved how it looked. I, like I said, I just think the texture is so beautiful. Um, and it's, it's so easy. So I, the, the patterns that I like working up are one row repeat, you know, mindless patterns so that, you know, you can still spend time with family or watch a movie. Well, listen to a movie, realistically, or a podcast or, a, you know, a good talk of some sort. So those are the, the types of projects I am into these days. Let's see, 1122. Does anybody have, let's see, Wilma, is, she says, I'm a beginner. What is the best yarn and hook size for practicing stitches? I seem to split the yarn loops. My pull through with Red Heart Super Saver. That is a good question. I, you know, something like a velvet yarn won't split, but it depending on the thickness of the yarn, it's going to be tricky to work with. Um, I think something that helps me with the the splitting yarn issue is having the right hook. Um, so I don't know if you if you've tried a couple different kinds. So let's see, Susan Bates, I believe. Her hooks, do I have one? I can see if I can show. They, they have like a, a sharper kind of point on them. Let me see what I've got in my bag right here. Let's see. There we go. I hope it'll show up. Let's see. It'll show up on the camera because it's white. So this is a Susan Bates hook and it's got that sharper. I One type of hook is called inline and there's another name for another type. Somebody help me out. I'm so sorry. I'm like fuzzy on this, but this is one style of a popular crochet hook with the sharper point. Um, and then I've got here, maybe I can put these next to each other to compare and contrast. So the green one is the boy hook and it's a little more rounded. And they're both pretty inexpensive, these, these hooks, you know, like a couple dollars a hook. Uh, so these are good ones to start with if you, if you want to practice and see what, what style hook, uh, you know, you work with better. Um, so those are some options. I really like the furls hook that I'm using because it's, it's like the shape of the boy hook, but sharp, if, if that makes sense. No, oh, it's so hard to see. Maybe if I just have it against the white background. Yeah, that's a little better. So it's a little sharp, but it's more rounded. And that's, I found that to work really well for me for, for not splitting the yarn as easily. Let's see. Oh my goodness, somebody, there's a bunch of wonderful tapered. Thank you, Linda. Tapered or inline are the two pop, most popular types of crochet hooks. The, the way the head is shaped. Uh, let's see, somebody suggests we crochet dots, crochet hooks. My goodness, Laura Pye, hi. Um, she says when she was new to cr crochet, she loved using Bernat baby blanket yarn because it doesn't split, it's so soft and works up so quickly. Jenny loves Susan Bates hooks. They have the padded ergonomic hooks, that's great. Felicia is asking, are you going in every stitch and skipping the stitch before the last stitch? No. So I'm skipping. I'm going in every other stitch. So let's see. Let me get this camera to focus again. So right here, let me get my little pointer. I am going to skip this stitch. So here's the stitch I just worked into. I'm skipping this stitch and I'm going to work into the next stitch. So every I'm working into every other stitch. Insert. I'm, I'm going to single crochet and double crochet. 
into the same stitch. This stitch right here and working into the next stitch, single crochet and then double crochet. And then at the very end here, skipping this stitch, going in where my stitch marker is, Whoop. slowly but surely, and single crocheting. Chain one and turn. And I'll move up the stitch marker. All right. Chris, you are welcome. Elizabeth says for cushioned ergonomic handle, she likes the set she got at happilyhooked.com. They have a longer shank so they can handle taller stitches like triple crochet cluster more easily than other ergonomics I've tried. That is a great tip. Thank you for sharing. 1127. I'm going to do one more row and then maybe we can move to the intermission. Does anybody have any other questions about the pattern or yarn or hooks? Oh, I guess one other thing I'll say about beginner yarn too is try not to jump into a very colorful variegated yarn right out the gate because that can be a little tricky to see where you're placing your stitches too. And then if you split the yarn, it's really colorful, then that, it, it yeah, it's tricky, it's tricky. Um, there's a crocheter named Nastasia on YouTube. I think she has a site as well. And she has a great learn to crochet video. It's actually how I learned nine years ago. And she suggests start with, you know, a worsted weight yarn that is not too light or too dark. Don't start with a black yarn because that's, you know, that's going to be hard to see where you're placing your stitches. And, you know, a white yarn might be kind of tricky too. And again, in that last stitch, we're just single crocheting. Chain one and turn. Have you tried changing colors between rows? Shell is asking. Yes. So the baby blanket pattern that I did in this stitch, um, if you go to the link Jenny had sent, there's, there's a picture of it and it's a striped baby blanket pattern. Um, and I love, I love how this stitch specifically works with, whoops, uh, with us, with stripes. Like, I think that it, it's, I really like doing striped baby blankets a lot, um, especially uneven stripes. I think it looks so modern and it's a great way to use up yarn from your stash because it, they're all, your stripes are all different sizes. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. And if you, if you read the blog post where I talk about my Suzette baby blanket, I actually ran out of one of the yarn colors sooner than I expected. So one of the stripes is a little smaller than the others. And I was like, okay, I can either pull out 70% of this blanket or I can just leave it. And I just left it. It's a handmade gift. Wasn't super obvious, but I'll show, um, I can show at the end of this row changing colors if uh, folks are interested. Yeah, I'll just, I mean, I've got two colors here, why not? So we're working right along. We're coming to the end. So if you're changing colors at the end of the row, which if you're doing a striped blanket, that's that's where you would change the colors. Let me grab, take the label off my yellow yarn. These are both brand new. All right, you get to the end of your row. You're about, you're gonna single crochet. So you start the first part of your single crochet, just pulling up that loop. And instead of yarning over and pulling through again, you are going to finish your stitch with the new color. So in this case, the yellow, I'm just gonna lay it over my hook. 
pull through. You're gonna wanna snug everything up. So in general, I guess the way I like to think about it is you're you're changing colors like one step earlier than you might think. You know, you're not finishing your single crochet stitch at the end of the row and then changing colors. You are changing colors as the last part of that last stitch. So hopefully that makes sense. And then as you continue, you could you just make sure you're you're using the working yarn and not the uh, yarn end here. So then you just continue on and chain one. Again, it's going to take some snugging up to get that perfect. And then you just continue along, move up your stitch marker or grab a new one if you want. And continue along. You'll, you know, of course, you'll cut your blue yarn and weave in your ends. And I shouldn't admit this, but usually what I like to do, yeah, so you got to kind of snug everything up. Since this isn't secured right now, I, if I'm not weaving in my ends as I go, and because I'm nervous about everything loosening up too much, I'll tie a little knot and then weave in my ends at the end of the blanket. Other, many designers will say don't tie knots, um, but it's, it's something that gives me peace of mind. Um, but yeah, I, I probably will pull this out before we do the border because I wanna keep the middle of the swatch one color and the border another color. So it's easier to differentiate, but yeah, I hope that was helpful. Um, Laura is asking, can you show more clearly the placing of the stitch marker? Sure, yeah, let me just, let's pull out the first stitch I just did of this row. So this, I had just chained one. I just turned and chained one. And whenever I place the stitch marker, let's get that focused. I just place it right behind the hook on that loop right there. So then you can see where I'd placed it before. Settles it just under this last stitch of the row. So it's really easy to see where that final single crochet goes. So yeah, I hope that helps. Let's see, any quick questions before? for intermission. Oh, Shanae is asking, has anyone noticed a difference in how the yarn slides on different kinds of hooks? Absolutely. So like a wood hook is gonna catch your yarn more. It's not gonna slide as fast as a metal hook, for example. Um, I'm using a wood hook on a different pattern right now and it's kind of making me crazy because I'm used to having like a plastic or a metal hook and the yarn sliding a lot faster. Bamboo is another one that's going to catch your yarn. So it's all about your preference. If you like that and you want to work a little more slowly and deliberately, then maybe the wood or bamboo are for you. I like working a little more quickly generally. So I really like, this is a resin hook, this furls hook um, or metal. I mean, I love, my favorites are the, I like this furls hook a lot, or I just like the metal boy hooks. So, all right. Vicki loves the stitch. I'm so glad. I love it too. I just think it's so pretty. I love, I, I just, I can't get over how simple it is to do if you are experienced with single crochet and double crochet stitches. And it looks so beautiful. So, okay, Jenny, I think this would be a great time for an intermission. Oh, Pat's just asking the name of the blue hook. This is a furls crochet hook. Um, ooh, let's get it to focus. F-U-R-L-S is the brand. They kind of cost a fortune. I, they're, I have two. I have two of these that I've invested in. They have some on their site that are like $100. It's bananas. This one I think was like 20. Um, again, I, I like it. I, I think that the, the simple, you know, 
cheaper ones you find at your local craft store just fine okay Jenny I'll really let you do the intermission now I'm going on and on all good <laughs> okay well thank you Dana this is a wonderful class so far can you all see this uh the learn to foundation paper piece class <laughs> promo this is our next class coming up. It is uh, Tuesday, April 18th. This is a quilting class. I know today we were learning all about crochet, but we do have lots of classes in all craft genres, sewing, quilting, um, crochet, and knitting. So uh, this is our quilting class coming up on April 18th. It is sponsored by our friend Carolina Moore. She has some great new quilting products out that she will be discussing during that class, um, but it is a live class. If you want to maybe expand your skills outside of crochet, learn a fun uh, quilting project. Um, that is April 18th, same time and place, uh, 11 a.m. Central Time. If you can't make this date or time, feel free to sign up anyway. It's free and we'll send you the recording. Uh, we also have an embroidery class coming up on May 9th. So this is sponsored by our friend Melissa. I forgot her last name, but uh, she will be doing an introduction, an, an intro to textural embroidery, uh, May 9th, same time, uh, 11 a.m. Central. It's free if you want to join but can't make that date or time feel free to sign up. Uh, again, we are always doing knitting, crochet, general crafting classes. We just have some fun new classes coming up um, that are outside of our norm, if you will, of the crochet classes. So if you're looking to expand your skills, um, feel free to join us at one of these classes. Otherwise, uh, feel free to always follow us on Eventbrite as well. We post all of our classes there and we will be having some new uh, crochet and knitting classes coming up in the coming months as well. So check our Eventbrite, uh, follow us on social media to promote, uh, to see what classes we have coming up. Um, Fave Crafts is, you know, the host of today's class. So we have tons of great patterns and inspiration on our website, plus uh, our email newsletter. We are always promoting our new classes in the email newsletter and on our social channels. So feel free to follow Faith Crafts to stay up to date with all of our upcoming classes. Um, and then just one more time, a quick reminder about our introductory offer. If you joined our class late, uh, here is our great deal for you guys today. If you're not already a member of I Like Crochet, this is a wonderful deal. 90% off the retail price of $49 for just $5 a year. You get uh, a one-year subscription to I Like Crochet Digital Magazine plus access to all of the back issues as well. So I will post a link to claim this deal in the chat. It's ilikecrochet.com slash virtual23. And then I'm also going to post a link to our uh, page on on Eventbrite. So you can follow us on Eventbrite and get notified anytime we post a new class. So I think that is it for me. I am going to stop screen sharing and pass it back to Dana. All right. Fantastic. Um, okay. So I did two more quick rows. Um, these are such good questions about the magazine. Jenny, I'll let you take those. Um, <laughs> I gotta focus on this class. So I just did two more quick rows just to have a nice square-ish swatch so that we can move into the border. Um, so one or two things I'll mention. This stitch I think is a little tricky to count. So what I've found easiest as I was working up the baby blanket pattern is these little rainbows, these little semicircle type sections, or if you can kind of envision it like a like little checker boxes um these are about two rows each and you'll know if you have an odd number or an even number of rows when the yarn depending on where your working yarn is so if you work just one row your working yarn is on this side right so you know you have an odd number if you work two rows and then work your way back then your yarn ends up on this side and you know you have an even number. So right here, um, I know I have an even number of rows because my yarn is on the same side as where I started. So it looks like, you know, this is two, four, six, eight, ten-ish. One, excuse me, two, four, six, eight, and again, a little tricky to see. So if, if you're working your own pattern and you're having trouble counting, there's a couple of things you can do. Say you want to do a striped pattern and you change your yarn every 10 rows. You can just mark the edge 
of get 10 stitch markers and mark the end of each row. And when you hit your 10 stitch markers, that's where you know where you're at. Uh, if you're doing uneven stripes and you're just kind of winging it as you go, doesn't matter what your row count is exactly. You can just work it, you know, as, as long as you want the blanket to be. So hopefully that's somewhat helpful. Um, if other people, I'm, I'm just crowdsourcing advice from you guys at this point. If anybody else has counting advice for different stitches, feel free to drop it in the chat. I'm sure it'd be super helpful to the other attendees. Okay, so to finish off this swatch and then move on to the border, all I'm doing, I've got my single crochet started in the last stitch here. You just pull the loop through, cut your yarn, always leave a nice size tail, like six-ish inches, so that you've got plenty to work with with weaving in your ends, and then just pull it all the way through. So at this point, we can take out our stitch markers. Even our ends. So you just grab a tapestry needle. You could do a sharp tapestry needle, or I've got a blunt tip one that I'm working with. Uh, that's kind of a, a personal preference thing. And what I'm going to try to do here is just follow the pattern of some of the stitches. There we go. Let it focus. There we go. And work your way back. Catch a loop of yarn if you can so that you're not just going to pull out what you just uh, stitched. Going back in the exact same stitches. And then we'll do one more pass. And again, catch like another loop of yarn somewhere to do that. I used to think, you know, oh, I don't want to just do three passes. I'm going to do like five or six to make sure it's really, 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 really secure. Well, then you end up with kind of a big lump, you know, in your work, a big textural lump. And so that's, you know, you don't want, you don't want to feel where you wove in your stitches either. So three is a nice number. So there's our first pass and I'll weave in the next one. And then we'll talk. Um, herringbone half double crochet. So the, the reason herringbone half double crochet got its name is because the way the stitches lay, if you're just working it in rows, it produces, you know, the stitches lean a bit. So it produces a, a herringbone look, a bit of a chevron look in your work. So if you look up on Pinterest, like a, a herringbone half double crochet blanket pattern, that'll give you a good idea of what the stitches look like when they're stacked together. Um, however, if you're just going around the border and you're going in the same direction, you're not going to get that, that zigzag look, texture, that zigzag look, because you're all going in the same direction. Instead, it, it allows the texture of the stitches to really shine rather than the direction they're pointing, if that, if that makes sense. And it might make more sense when I show you the stitch itself. All right, so there's our little swatch. Upside down, now it's right side up. So this is, this is what we've got. Now, grab your yarn in another color if you have it. If you're using the same color, that's fine. It'll just be a little more difficult to see. And what you'll do, is you can pull up a loop of yarn in any corner. For me, the corner I like to start with most is your upper right corner of the top edge because then you're going to be working across the top of your stitches as, as though you're you know, continuing your pattern or whatever. And I think it's so much easier to identify where to place your stitches around the edges because I, I putting a border on a blanket is one of the hardest parts, especially when your stitch to start with is so easy. Um, because going in the sides, it's tricky to see on the sides where to place your stitches. So you pull up a loop in your upper right hand corner. 
chain one to secure it. And then you're actually going to single crochet in the same space. And our first row or our first uh, round around the whole blanket is going to be just single crochet, which I think is, is good advice for pretty much any blanket border, especially a really complicated border. If you have that good foundation of single crochet stitches, you know when you're working your border exactly where to place the stitches. And I just made the same mistake I said not to do, and I started working with the end of the yarn instead of the yarn attached to the ball. All right, we pulled up a loop in the corner. I'm gonna chain one and then single crochet into that same corner. And we're going to mark it. We're just marking where we've started. Oops, excuse me. All right, we're gonna single crochet in every stitch across the top so that's easy where this is the easy part just single crochet in those stitches across all right and let's see i've got 1146 on my clock so i'm going to try to get this foundation row out of the way relatively quickly so we can you know really focus on that herringbone stitch so again, the, the, the top row is easy because you can see your Vs, you know exactly where to place your stitches and to space them. Now here is our first corner. You're gonna do three single crochets in each corner. There's one, two, and you know what? Just because I'm such a fan of stitch markers, I'm gonna mark the middle stitch in each corner. Again, we're we're taking guesswork out as much as possible from our, just our projects in general, but especially our border. So let's just pause. I'll show you what we've got so far. There's all our single crochet stitches. Here's our three single crochets in the corner with our middle stitch marked. All right, let me pull a little bit more yarn from my working ball here. The sides are tricky. Um, so in the, the pattern link, there should be a visual that shows roughly where to place your stitches. So let's start right around here. And essentially where we're going is kind of right before this bump. Let's let the camera focus. There we go. Right before this bump and right after the bump is, this is not very technical language, but hopefully it's helpful. So I'm gonna insert a hook right here. And I'm going to insert a hook right after. And after working your first round of the single crochet across the top, you should sort of feel how spaced apart your border stitches are and it should it should feel as though the the spacing the tension is similar to that first round if you are really pulling at the stitches to get them to to, to place them then you're probably going to end up with your border being a bit too stretched out um, and then it's going to curl. And if you place too many stitches, then your border is going to um, ripple. So yeah, it's it's tricky. It's tricky. The borders are tricky. I think with this stitch pattern, it's a little easier than, than many borders. Um, there have been blankets I've given up on putting a border on because I could not figure out like I, I would space the stitches too close and then too far and I couldn't find a good pattern and it, it's like this blanket's just not going to have a border. But the Suzette stitch I think lends itself really nicely to placing a border. Okay so right now we're on the, the foundation row that initial chain row and it's fairly easy to 
identify where to place your stitches, you're you're inserting in in each of the chain stitches in the beginning there. If you want to double check your work, you can always count the number of stitches across the top and the bottom and the sides and make sure they are even. When you're working something like a blanket, um, you know, if you're off by one or two stitches, that's not going to be noticeable. Something small like this, if you're giving somebody a coaster, you um, might want to count if that's your personality if you're if, if you if you would prefer to um you know have it be as as perfect and error free as possible i've probably made a few comments at this point that show that i'm not as much of a perfectionist when it comes to Projects like like a you know something simple like this you know you have to be a perfectionist when it's a garment right like you can't uh, just let it go and hope it fits um, but something like you know a baby blanket or a little coaster it's probably going to get coffee spilled on it anyway can can be a little more uh, what's it happy accidents isn't that what Bob Ross says have some of those sprinkled throughout. All right, so we're back at our original corner and we only put one single crochet in that first stitch there. So we're gonna, we have to, sorry, in that first corner, we only put one single crochet. So we need two more. And this stitch here is going to be my new corner stitch, which actually I'm just gonna mark everything. I think it's, you know, it's so helpful. And once again, just takes the guesswork out. So that's my corner that I just worked right next to the first single crochet we just worked. All right, let me lay it out so you guys can see it. I know I'm working a little quickly now that we're approaching noon. Um, I love these vintagey colors. I don't know about you guys. I think they're so pretty. Now that we've reached the end here, we're just going to slip stitch into our first chain, which is marked. Slowly but surely. Very slowly but surely. All right. That out because we don't need that at the moment. All right. Chain two. And we're going to begin our herringbone stitch. Throw a stitch marker around this chain too. So once again, we know where we've started. And to do the herringbone stitch, we're going to work into the stitch right next to our hook there. Yarn over and insert your hook and pull up a loop. And here's where it differs from half double crochet. Not only do you pull up a loop, but then you continue it through that first loop on your hook. Yarn over and pull through. Let's do that again. So yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, pull that first loop through, yarn over and pull through. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up the loop, continue pulling up the loop, yarn over and pull through. You can see here, we're starting to get this pretty, these like pretty chunky slanty stitches right here for our herringbone. Hold on, yarn over, pull up a loop, continue to pull it up, yarn over and pull through. Now, if you recently did an ordinary half double crochet pattern, or you know the stitch is new to you in general, it's it it took me some practice to get the muscle memory because it's it's not intuitive. You know, so many of the basic crochet stitches, you do not pull that loop through the first loop on your hook without yarning over first. Um, so it's yeah, it's different, but it's it's so pretty the way it. It stacks the stitch. 
you kind of get these like twisty V things going on. Which looks a little different than an ordinary half double crochet border. Okay, Linda, <laughs> Linda's asking me to start it again. Okay, so Linda, you've gotten to the edge of your, your single crochet border. You join with a slip stitch and you chain two to get your height for this board, this, this um, herringbone half double crochet stitch. And all you do is start working it in the following stitch. You yarn over, insert your hook and pull through and then continue pulling through that first stitch. Yarn over and pull through. So here we've marked our corner and we're gonna put three herringbones in the corners. So here's our first one. Here's our second one. Mark it. I'm going to mark the middle of the three for each corner. Now, if you're just doing one row of herringbone for your border, you don't need to mark anything at this point. But if you're going to do, if you're going to continue doing herringbone, you know, rows, then you, it's it is useful to mark the middle of each corner. So again, there's no guesswork. All right, so we've rounded our corner and we're going to continue along. Oh, I'm so sorry, you guys. All right, I'm going too fast. Let me slow it down. Just really focus on the stitch. So yarn over to start. Insert your hook into that first stitch. Pick up a loop. So you've got three on your hook. Continue pulling that loop through the first stitch. So you've got two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through. Again, yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, pick up a loop, continue pulling that first loop through that stitch, yarn over and pull through. likes a ruffle border. That is fair. I'm working on a baby blanket um, right now that is going to have a shell stitch border, which I've never done before. And I'm really excited. I think it's going to be so pretty. You guys are so welcome. If anybody has any last minute questions, I don't think I'm going to make it around the whole, well, if I go faster, I might make it around the whole uh, coaster before the end of the class. Um, Feel free to drop them in the chat. Jenny, if I missed anything, I, you know, I kind of just glance at the chat periodically. So I might've missed some questions. Um, you could let me know if I missed anything. No, you've been doing a good job keeping up with all the questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> all right. So glad. Okay. Yeah. I, I want to respect everyone's time. So, you know, I, I've already got 1159 on the clock. Maybe Jenny, if you want to just kind of go to that last slide and I'll um I'll see if I can finish this up while you talk. And then okay, we can that show sounds everyone. Good. Yeah. Sure. All right. Um yeah, this is our final slide of the day. So this is Dana and my uh, our email addresses. If you guys have any questions, feel free to uh, reach out J Bowden at primecp.com and D Neald at primecp.com. Uh, and then one more time, this great deal from our friends at I Like Crochet Digital Magazine. For just $5, you get a one-year subscription to the magazine, plus access to all of the back issues as well. So the URL to claim that deal is ilikecrochet.com slash virtual23. It is for new members only. So if you're not yet a member, you can use uh, this code. You can share it with your friends and family. It does make a great gift. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, so Fave Crafts is our main 
free website. So feel free to visit babecrafts.com for endless pattern inspiration and ideas. We do have a free email newsletter as well, which I think I posted a link to that in the chat too. So um, yeah, thank you to our sponsor. I like crochet for hosting today's class. And thank you, Dana, for teaching us all of your ways. Uh, we do have a few, let's see what's going on in the chat. Oh, um, Darlene was saying, if you do a second row, would you turn your work? Uh, so maybe just a Ooh. few remaining questions. I will go back to Dana and she can help answer some of these last minute questions. But thank you guys. We will email a recording to the class in 24 hours. So if you have any other questions in the meantime, feel free to reach out. Okay, so Darlene, I'm so glad you asked that question. So you can turn your work or you cannot turn your work. So how's, how's that for a helpful answer? Um, if you turn your work, you're going to get more of that herringbone look so I'm just I randomly um in the middle of this just turn to hopefully get a few stitches in and show you what that would look like now if you don't turn your work you'll get more of it, it won't be a herringbone look uh so yeah, I hope this shows up I don't know it's kind of hard to it's very subtle but this first row here your stitches are leaning a little bit more to the right. And then this next little row, they're leaning to the left. So you end up getting, as you go, more of a V, a little bit more of a V, if you turn your work. If you don't turn your work, pull up the swatch I had done before. If you don't turn your work, you end up with, there's there's no like herringbone. There's no chevron type style. You're kind of you've just got this like pretty border, I guess. So um yeah, it's really up to you. I I actually prefer not turning because I think this I, I don't know. I just I think it looks nice and squishy and um like this beautiful stacked stitch if you don't turn. But if you like the idea of having a little more texture in your border then you can turn with each row. I hope that helps. If you don't turn, all you do when you get to the end of the row is join with a slip stitch, chain two, and then continue along. Um, okay, ah, I, I think that was everything. I'm It's 12.03, so we've gone over. If you guys have any other questions, just reach out to us via email and, and we're happy to answer them. Um, oh, corners with herringbone, three herringbone half double crochet stitches in each corner. Um, and that's that's written in the pattern too. So, okay. Ah, I think that's everything. Thank you again everybody so much for joining us today and I hope you have a great day.